So, Tom, welcome to London. Um, what, what brings you here on this trip? Oh, uh, really, uh, initially, the, the, the reason we organized a trip to London was for the uh, Royal Academy of uh, Arts lecture that I gave last Thursday. And then from that, we've just um, extended it into events and meetings and um, just visiting London in general. It's been wonderful. And was the uh, talk, did it have a focus? Yeah, uh, the, uh, generally the focus of the talk is, is influences uh, on my work um, and then uh, kind of a survey. Uh, at this point in my career, and I make this point in the lecture, at this point in my career I've got so many projects, it's sort of difficult to go into them in detail. Sure. Uh, and so it's a survey of projects, uh, not particularly uh, um, in any sort of depth for any project, but trying to take uh, the larger career and kind of looking at it with uh, certain uh, subjects and how the subjects sort of work with them. Okay. The, they're, they're, they're a very, um, very <coughs> um, underrated resource, that, that series of lectures. That I mean, they have some great speakers there, and it, it's it's not kind of widely known. But it, oh, is that we, right? We work with them occasionally. We've been some of them. So it's, it's oh, yeah, it's a... Yeah, we saw the little pamphlet, and yeah, it's a terrific lineup. Yeah. It was an honor to be in that lineup, frankly. No, absolutely. No, they're great guys. They're great guys. So, um, mo moving on to um, the reason that we're, we're talking is uh, congratulations on winning the House of the Year 2010. Thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, I did some research and I found that you've got 69 other awards. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's an incredible achievement. It must be. Thank you. Um, yeah, it must, be, it must be very fulfilling to, to know you're doing something. So it's obviously so right. Hopefully. And, <laughs> um, I, and I know you didn't want to talk about building specifically, but maybe <coughs> the, the pier which which mm -hmm. which which won the uh, award, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about, I mean it's an extraordinary building, I mean as soon as we saw it on the judging panel, everybody's eyes just kind of, you well, know, that's interesting. sat yeah. back and, and, mm -hmm. and it, it's, how did you, what was the brief for, for something like that? Well, it was uh, for, it, and I, I'd say this in general, but most of my clients, the people that hire me are really interesting people because they, well first of all, to hire an architect is, a, is an amazing uh, uh, sort of commitment. A commitment of risk. Uh, uh, the woman that hired me for this particular project has has a, a very interesting background. She's an art collector, and has been uh, doing that virtually her entire life. Her mother's a, a, a well-known art collector, also her mother and dad are well-known art collectors. So she came to the project with already an understanding, a deep understanding of what sort of the, the possibilities of commissioning and the possibilities of risk are all about. So when she hired me, she was interested in, of course, the body of the work that I had been doing up to that point, but um, was interested in hiring me and working with me very closely and doing something that was uh, maybe taking the idea of a house and uh, morphing it a bit and changing it a bit and sort of investigating some things that well, maybe you could argue it haven't been investigated uh, in the recent recent past. But so the brief was, frankly, uh, do something interesting on this piece of property, <laughs> big, you know, and think about what that what those possibilities are. So it was a, a terrific client in the sense that I knew she would be involved, but she basically left many of the early decisions up to me on how to sort of approach this second home that she wanted to build. I mean, for, for, from our perspective, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I, I'm not sure quite what the context is. Um, I mean, it seems to be set on kind of a mountainside. I mean, it is, is it on, on the edge of a town or what? what? Well, some people would argue that the northwest of the United States is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so it, that, it's, it's a definition that maybe that <coughs> it could vary. It's, it's um, outside of Seattle. Um, well, it, it's a little hard to explain how far it is because it's actually on an island. It's an island in, a, in sort of an inland sea. <coughs> They're well-known islands. Lopez Island is the island where this particular project is located, and it is uh, it is relatively remote. I mean, it takes about from Seattle it would probably take you about three hours to get there, or you can get there by float plane very very quickly. So it's always it's always kind of a kind of a, an interesting question to answer. It feels remote. As an island, by yourself, on this piece of property, 
it definitely is, a, is an escape. It feels like a remote place. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether this has ever happened before, but you also managed to get a, another house onto the shortlist. So not only, yeah. not only did you win, but you had one on the shortlist. I mean, that's, that's extraordinary when there were, I think, uh, yeah, 160 entries or something. Right? I mean, that's, um, uh, and that, that had the, the jury scratching their heads. It was, uh, sh is it Shadow? Shadowbox. Shadowbox. Yeah, yeah they, they were all pouring over the drawings, trying to work out whether the bit moved and the whole thing. I mean, there was just an extraordinary project. Oh, that's interesting. Well, Shadowbox uh, is on the same island, and literally, okay. maybe well, by car, a mile and a half, two miles away. So that was, yeah, that was a, that was a deep surprise and kind of a happy surprise, of course. Because they're both, well, for one thing, if you look, if you look at Shadowbox, you'll recognize, and you look at the Pierre, you'll recognize there are, they are two buildings with two very different personalities. Yes. And that is the intention on doing these homes, sure. is to figure out what's the personality of the client, yeah. the site, and the idea of how they want to live. And uh, that, hence, the difference of personalities. I mean, the, the, the pier is, is actually staggering in its simplicity, that, oh. it, that it just works so well. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, and, and had you seen something? Were, were you inspired by another um, project somewhere? That, that, did, did, where did that come from? Yeah, I think there, oh yeah. Um, I mean, you know, all architects always stand on the shoulders of other people. I mean, obviously, I've had all sorts of mentors and all sorts of uh, teachers and uh, other architects from afar that, that I've, I've uh, studied and admired. Uh, in this case, um, the, re the reference was a, a local architect that was uh, well known, and his name was Roland Terry. And he did, on Lopez Island, he did a project that was um, similar in its sort of sensibility of a very sort of straightforward, clean idea of how the building worked in that particular landscape. But what he did, other than going into the rocks, he gathered a bunch of driftwood, which we can't do anymore leg legally. And really? It, and it, yeah. <laughs> and then assembled, and then assembled a, assembled a home. And that's probably about four or five miles from the, from the site. Right. But, uh, but it was that, I, I think in particular, it was that direct engagement over what was there on the island at that time, and in yeah. this case, what we had was a rock. Yeah, <laughs> and then how do we how do we repurpose or f make this rock work for the location okay. of the house? And that was the whole idea that basically the rock was a quarry for the rock that we would use in the project. So it became our concrete aggregate. It became our terrazzo. Then, of course, it became the the rocks for the the carport. The, the sort of Bar Barney Rubble, Fred Flintstone carport that we did. <laughs> All kind of invented as we were coring, somewhat, as we were coring out of this, this rock. I mean, obviously we had some sort of plan, but really the rock was, as we began to blast it, drill it, carve it, shape it, the rock was beginning to break in different ways, and we were there to understand the implications of how that rock was being sort of how it was sort of coming apart yeah. as we were t tearing it apart and we let the building change to that. If you look at early schemes that in fact our lower floor was actually on the opposite side but we discovered that the rock was uh, fissuring in a different way than we thought. Okay, it yeah, you really need to so we were sort of reacting. It's like okay. kind of like playing billiard, billiards or something. And looking back, were, were there any uh, in, in your career um, do you s see any kind of defining moments, or pivotal moments, of where it, you got kind of projected onto your course that you're on now? Or? Well, yes, I had some moments in my life where um, it, it, there was a series of them, of course. Well, er, my dad's an architect, uh -huh. so I actually left home, and I always make this point in my lectures, I left home not wanting to be an architect. So that's a defining moment. You know, basically, there's one profession I'm not going to be, and that's an architect. I went to... Uh, the university to basically study physics and hard science and uh, kind of a particular interest in geophysics. Um, but very soon um, I began taking um, classes and so at some point there was another defining moment where I was, was moving away from the hard sciences into, into architecture. Um, beyond that, yeah, you know, I've had my uh, professors, Oster Zarina and Stephen Hall, who had a huge influence on me and kept me kept me interested in, in the potential of architecture. And I think that's a defining moment. You know, yeah. a couple of academic moments where um, it changed directions. And then beyond that, being hired uh, by um, 
uh, you know, I had a, a relatively lengthy career, almost an apprenticeship in a way, and I don't know in those, in those years if there was really a defining moment. But when I was hired by uh, uh, Carol Bobo, who is the owner of Shadowbox, but also was the woman that hired me for Studio House, which is in the first book, uh, that was a defining moment. Right. Because it was the first time I walked into a building <clears throat> after it was done that I had worked on. And I felt it, it <clears throat> you know, all those sort of architectural conspiring issues were, were coalescing into something that made sense to me. It felt great, it felt good. And I knew from that point on uh, that there was something, there was a shift or there was a confidence um, that uh, uh, would would define the rest of my career. I mean, that, that, that's the un undefinable kind of magic of architecture, isn't it? That you can actually uh, have that vision in your head and, and, and kind of understand that end result that no amount of plans or anything can actually kind of do that, can they? It's, it's exactly right. That when it's you walk in, and I, I, I experience it from a, an onlooker, you go into a building and it just looks and feels right and you just get so excited by it and you can't imagine how that could have been foreseen. By, Absolutely you know. right. And because there's so, f there's so little architecture out there that really moves you mm. that way, but when it moves yeah. you, you know it's right and you know it feels right and you, there's, how do you describe it? I it, don't know. It is interesting because we, we do see, I mean I've sat on nearly all of our judging sessions uh, and, and every now and then a project just comes across and just see the room, the eyes. The oh, that's just, just, just kind of light up, and you know that this is kind of there's this, something this. that's happening. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it's very hard to, to to kind of box and say this is what we're looking for because it just happens. That's you know, exactly the, right. Well, it's, it's so hard to define what's good and what isn't good. Well, it's actually easy to define what isn't good yeah. for some reason, yeah. <laughs> oddly. Yeah. But when something magic happens, it's almost like music or poetry or art. You don't even know how to describe it. Yeah. All you know, it's transcendent and you can read it. And it, with a jury um, like you were working with, everybody there is a professional, everybody there is a pro at reading plan section elevation mm -hmm. and understanding photographs. And th that's our job. And it is, it is interesting when you sort of see it unfold in front of you if you're working on something, because not all projects work out that well, you know, that where all of a sudden you go, oh, it works. <laughs> why? I wish, you know, if you, if you knew why, I mean, you, you know it's hard work and everything, but if you knew why, you wouldn't you keep, continue to yeah. do that. And, and, and looking forward, do you have any other kind of building types that you're, you're kind of itching to, mm. to, to, to get going on, or maybe you're already working on it? Uh, sometimes, yeah, I am working on, on some that um, I'm, I'm excited about. I don't know if they'll actually be built. You know, it's the classic problem of yeah. it will will the paper become building? And uh, it's always a question. I think um, it's a um, it's a, another winery project. I'm very excited about. Uh, but you know, the project I have not worked on uh, by myself in, a, in any sort of leadership position. Uh, I was it was a chapel, uh, and I was lucky to work with Stephen Hall on St. Ignatius Chapel. In the Seattle University campus, and those are special places, you know, the, especially the yeah. small ones, you know, the very private, somewhat, you know, somewhat private but intimate uh, chapel. Uh, and of course, any denomination um, is uh, uh, it, it's just all it means to me is it's a spiritual place for somebody yeah. to have one of those uh, very private spiritual moments. Uh, and then uh, I'm working on the University of Washington Natural History Museum, mm -hmm. and for me. Coming from a science background, uh, repurposing an old building, a kind of a horrible old building, uh, into hopefully something much better uh, with an unbelievable collection of, of artifacts and people, frankly, it's a really great group, is, uh, is what I'm really excited about in the future. And, con and of course, continuing to do residential projects. Yeah all over the place, all over the world, hopefully. Uh, I, I was reading uh, this, this morning that uh, I think it was your publisher said that your first book uh, was one of the, the, the best-selling books ever. I mean, that's pretty good for, for, a, for a monograph. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Kind of a shock. Uh, yeah, and that was 2006, I think. 2006. It? And this, uh, the Houses 2, is due out in... Uh, this this fall, isn't it? It's already out. It's out? It's out. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think for about a month or so. But, yeah, and it's exciting. Reception for that. Uh, apparently, apparently, uh, you know, at the RA, we we had a book signing afterwards. Okay. And I don't know how many books they had there, but they sold out. So, 
I was signing all night. Fantastic. That's great. Um, and, and is the, the, the Pierre, is that in this one or in yes. this one? It's on the cover. It's on the cover of the book. And, uh, yep, yeah, it, it's got a, it's got a, 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 a chapter uh, kind of describing okay. it in photographs and plans. Fantastic. Wild Architecture News.